but my passion is life. And I was telling you just before we um, got started, I just came back from Lebanon. That was my 95th country. Passive income gives you the ability to go do those types of things. So whatever your thing is, whether it's travel or you want to be a bodybuilder or you want to be a chef or you want to, uh, I don't know, if you, you, you just want to take care of your family or you want to knit, passive income is a way to get there. It's a way for you to control your time and time is the only true asset we have. So I just wanted to part with that because I think a lot of times on these podcasts or when you see someone speaking on a stage, they talk about the number of units they have and the net worth and no, man, the whole thing is about passive income and controlling your time so, such that you can take care of your family and realize whatever legacy it is you want for yourself and your kids and you go from there. Hey, how's it going, guys? This is Dan Wynn, and welcome to the Financial Freedom Journal. Today, we have a very special guest. His name is uh, Maurice Philogene, and you know, he's a very, very long, extensive bio, so I'm just going to kind of uh, please introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about what, what you got going on. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate it, Dan. Good morning. Uh, so Maurice Philogene, I'm based out of the Washington, D.C. area, was born in New York, raised in Boston, but got down here um, by way of University of Virginia. Um, so the way you and I connected through a mutual contact is that, uh, I'm a full-time real estate investor, syndicate deals on the multifamily space for the last four years. And that's been kicking up quite a bit. Um, I've always been a consulting executive at a global consulting firm for 22 years. I'm still there. Uh, I became a street cop, um, in the DC area 11 years ago as a means to give back to local community. Uh, I'm still there. And then um, also, uh, as you and I were talking about, I'm an Air Force Reservist, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, just retired after 22 years, finally, in October. Um, and then um, just outside of all of that, I'm an avid investor through my group. So we invest in pretty much anything that deals with, uh, that will generate passive income. So anything from multifamily investing to, we have a portfolio of restaurants, we've invested in apps. Um, I'm looking at one other company right now. So the professional life, uh, is very diverse. Okay. Yeah. So, um, a man of service, uh, you know, he's been in, in the, in the military and the air force for, you said 22 years, I believe when, when we were talking. Yeah. So, um, and then to get out and go straight to, uh, be a police officer as well. That's, that's uh, very, very uh, commendable. So thank you very much for your service and, um, your, your, um, your commitment to the, to the community. That's awesome. That's great. All right. So as far as, um, as far as real estate, um, we, we know you, you've worked at, um, you've worked at a larger firm before, and then you started getting into syndication. And I assume at, at one point you, you know, you kind of started small or did yeah. you start small or did you, or did you just automatically jump into syndication or what did that look like for you? What did your real estate journey look like? Yeah. So, so my, I appreciate you asking that question. So my, the real estate journey was, is, is separate from the professional life. And it all came from when I was 22 and I've said this story before, but when I was 22, I bought my own condo. Um, and that was Dan right at the beginning of the boom back in the early two thousands. And, uh, maybe a couple months later, the same floor plan in the building next door closed for 30 grand more. And that just confused me. <laughs> so I called my father, asked him what that was. He said, you just made 30 grand, figured out what equity was. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> figured out what equity was. And I, and I love telling this story. I, I literally, after that conversation with my father, it was either that day or the next day I went to the library, read eight or nine books back to back without ever leaving the library. Cause I was just shocked that I had made someone's salary in a couple months time. So within a year I had bought nine or 10 more condos and that kind of started my real estate arc way back in the early 2000s. And I want to preface that. So once I kind of figured that out, at the same time I had picked up, uh, you remember those four dummies? Pers uh, four, four yeah, real estate for dummies? Yeah, well oh, I had yeah. picked up personal finance for dummies. Okay randomly i don't know why i bought it i was up in new york with family and i bought it at a weird bookstore for three dollars and change i just got really interested on the financial freedom aspect of things um 
So when you coupled the real estate with, a, with knowledge of financial freedom, then a light bulb went off in my head and I said, you know, in the future, I'm going to be financially free so I can do the things that I want to do. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So I, I want to touch on just a few pieces. Um, yeah. One, one, you started with condos and a lot of people, I mean, that's a great, that's a great starting point, but a lot of people will say, Hey, condos, you know, with the HOA fees and you know, the, you, you know, don't really have ability to, to do what you want within the condo. So was it just, uh, was it just happenstance you started off with condos or was it, um, or did you deliberately, cause you said you, I think you said you got like, uh, how many condos did you get after that? Oh goodness. I got up to about 30. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so I assume it was just a, a rhythm. So what was that like for you as far as, you know, it, it, it was happenstance. It just so happens that I, the, the place that I bought to live was a condo. <laughs> uh, the place that sold next door when the real estate journey started was a condo. I reached out to a broker to buy my second one. And she actually liked the idea of condos because she said, Maurice, you're a young professional. You're going to be busy. You're not going to want to be dealing with maintenance. Listen, just suck up the condo fee, 230, 300 bucks, whatever it was going to be. Let them deal with it and you keep pressing on in, in your journey. So one way or the other, just condos made sense. And then, Dan, you know how it is. Like once you get into the motion of everything, you develop spreadsheets and a system of doing things. So I just always expected to pay a condo fee of some sort. Um, but of course, people will say, look, you could have made more money if maybe you didn't pay condo fees and you went to a single family home or does it really matter? I mean, I, I am where I am at this point because I did something and that's what really, that, that's really the crux of it. And that's huge. A lot of people will, again, have those, have some kind of limiting belief and it'll just hold them back or they'll just, you know, get kind of trapped in that uh, analysis paralysis of a hey, HOA fees. I'm, you know, I'm kind of paying HOA fees. So as long as you factored it in, I assume, you know, you factored it in, you made sure your cash flowing off of that. And plus, yeah. um, when you own those 30 condos, were they all in the same, in the, in the same like condominium or were they different? They were kind of like spread yeah, out. Good question. So uh, in the single family space, I had properties as far south as Fredericksburg, Virginia, as far north as the Maryland, Delaware line. Oh, so you were spread was, out. Yeah, I was really spread out. Um, in many cases, and I still own a lot of them. In many cases, they were in the same complexes. Like I can think of one complex now where I have six of them still. The reason why I bought in that complex because because I know that complex really, really well. So anytime something came on the market, uh, the management company of the complex knows who I am. I was always good about networking with them. And they would say, hey, we have someone in the complex who's getting ready to sell because he or she is moving or they're struggling or whatever. So Just they already know. Radar, Maurice, because you, <laughs> you buy them, you tend to pay the condo fees and the bills. So they want people who pay the bills, right? Um, but yeah, they were all over the place because as the market shifts, you know this, as the market shifts, things get a little bit harder in one area, you gotta go to another area. So I used that, that same spreadsheet that I had for maybe 15 years and was just finding different properties in different counties, um, generally in the area, but you know, three to four hours drive was probably about the max I was doing at the time. Okay. Now, um, I, I just want to keep touching just a little bit more on, on the condos because yes. I think a lot of people starting their, uh, start, just starting off tend to try to get in a condos. They're, typically, they're a little, a little uh, cheaper than the single family home would be yeah. and obviously, you know, cheaper than the, the larger multifamily. So um, I think it's very interesting for, uh, for our listeners. Um, sure. So when you started, when you started uh, buying the condos, do you have a... Were there, was there a price range? I mean, can, can you kind of share with yeah. us some of those numbers, what they look like a little bit? Yeah, there was a price range. I, I would say generally somewhere between 60 grand and 150. Sometimes I would get up to 200 grand. Because, so Dan, when, I, when all that stuff started, probably by 06, I started to figure out that, man, you know, if, if I'm buying this condo for 80 grand, it's not going to take me that long to pay it off if... Uh, because I was, you remember there was new construction going on. You may not remember. There was new construction going on back then where you could put a down payment on a new construction condo. It would be built for a year. And then by the time it was built, it was worth a hundred grand more. Yeah. It was crazy stuff going on back in the day. So I put down payments on a lot of those. And then as soon as those condos came to be, I sold them right away, took oh. the profits and paid off the old ones. Nice. So you were right. basically flipping, I, flipping land for the most part. 
Pretty much. So I said, let me keep the price of the condos down. If I can, you know, listen, it's not sexy. It's not like sexy properties and stuff like that. It's just good places where good people can live. 80, 80 grand condo, uh, maybe rent for a thousand or 1100 bucks a month, depending on the area. Um, you pay that off and then 1100 bucks minus a $250 or let's for sake of math, we'll say 300 a $300 condo fee, you got $800 in your pocket for the rest of your life, right? So I used that formula for 14 years and would buy one, uh, buy a second one, use the income from the regular jobs, use the uh, equity appreciation from other condos, pay off the first one, pay off the second one, pay off the third one. And I press repeat for 14 years until I replace my salary at work. That is excellent. That's a beautiful story. So yeah. the only one key thing, because like, like I know a lot of my listeners are going to, are going to say, Hey man, I'm going to start looking into condos based off, yeah. of what, you know, based off what Maurice is saying. Uh, the only one thing I, I question is, um, are nowadays, right? So I know this was happening in 06 as far as, Hey, I can pretty much buy the land for its build. I'm already making, you know, I, I got 50, $60,000 in equity. Oh, right. What, right. So today in today's time, what do you see as far as as far as condos and are you still holding condos and would you recommend would you still recommend condos for the first time investor? I like condos for the first time investor because they're relatively simple. You can come up with a spreadsheet. Here's the income. Here's the expense. You can only have three main expenses, your taxes, the property management fee. Uh, I was self-managing for a while and then finally got out of that business. It was part of just my growth. But the property management fee and the condo fee. You just have those three main expenses. So for someone who's starting out, like that's a pretty simple operation to run. And maybe they're making 200 bucks a month, if they're lucky, 200, 300, depending on how the mortgage sits. Sorry, the mortgage is an expense, but depending on how the mortgage uh, pans out. But I'm not seeing the speculation uh, from 04, 05, 06, 2006, that not seeing the speculation from what was happening back then today. You just don't. You don't see that and the market has gotten smarter but when i say that people were buying land and selling the condos or whatever places when they were built you know walking away with 120 grand 150 grand in one case 200 grand um yeah those those days those days were over. <laughs> I'm, gonna make that, I'm gonna make that clear those yeah. days are over um yeah, okay. But, uh, but I do think condos are a good, good place to start and, and, and a good place to continue. I have a book, book that I picked up years ago. I'm looking at my library over there. <clears throat> it was investing in condos and the guy in the book said the exact same thing. It ain't sexy, it's long, but if you stay the course, 10, 15 years later, you, you find yourself with a portfolio of maybe 15, 20, 25 of these things and you're walking away with 150 grand passive. That's someone's salary. That gives you the ability to, I don't want to say retire because I don't like that word, but that gives you the ability to go do the things in life that you want to do. So while it may not be sexy, you know, it, it works. I don't know. I think any type of, any type of cash flow is sexy. So I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure, I'm sure most people would agree if it's cash flow, it's, uh, it's sexy. It doesn't matter what it is. It's going to be poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. So, um, so that, yeah, that's great. So, um, I love that story. I love your, yeah. your, uh, your transition. I mean, I'm, we're going to start talking here syndication sure. in a second, but I love that, you know, everybody has a starting place and that's kind of where you cut your teeth and that's where you learn the most. Um, and, and I love, I love the way you, you pretty much went about that and, and how you were able to, uh, to build to those 30 or so condos. Now, how many of those condos are you, do you still own now? Uh, in the, uh, in the portfolio, maybe 16, 16 to 18. Okay. Maybe okay. I still have. You know, the funny thing, it's a mental thing. And my mentor <laughs> is telling me, man, you, you have all those things paid off. You need to, you need to 1031 those things into larger properties. I know, but the funny thing is I can't let them go easily. <laughs> because those little bad boys took care of me for a decade and a half, right? Yeah. And they still cash flow. Some of them, you know, they'll, they'll cash flow 10 grand a year. And why? What? <laughs> Like I, I could, but I just refuse to because, frankly, they've been my friends for a, for a very long time. Yeah, I know those those uh those first deals, right? You're like yeah. you kind of start getting kind of attached to it, especially if they're if they're cash flowing like you know like how um how the cash flowing for you. I actually, just recently sold my first deal. Yeah. I don't know, maybe like three or four months ago. But it was easier for me to part ways because I was only cash flowing like I don't know 150 bucks a single family home. Oh, so it was, it was like really really. It, 
it was pretty easy for me to cash flow <laughs> so, <laughs> or pretty easy for me to get rid of actually. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so let's transition into some of the, uh, your more recent deals and, um, yeah. kind of what you're working on now. So four years ago, we're in 2019, four year, four, three, four years ago, I had a, a somewhat of a self revel self revelation. I'm a self development type of person. If I sit stagnant, uh, I just, I don't do well. And I recognize that by still being in the family, single family space, uh, it wasn't all condos. I did, I did have some single family homes and stuff, but being in a single family space and doing a single family deal, I wasn't learning anything anymore. Um, and that just goes to show it's not all about money. It's, it, it is about your personal growth and who, who you are as a person and who you develop into. So I felt like the natural transition was into multifamily, but of course I had limiting beliefs. I can't do this stuff. Um, I found a mentoring program, you know, went to one of those seminars, you know how those things go. I was in there for about five minutes. I, I didn't need to see anything else. I plopped down a fair amount of money, joined the mentoring program for a fair, for a fair amount of money. <laughs> um, it took me probably two years Oh, I got deployed in the middle of that. I got deployed to um, Turkey and uh, Africa. And it took me roughly two years to get over the limiting belief that I could not do a multifamily deal. The mentor saw something in me, I guess, and offered to get on a plane, flew down to DC, spent 48 hours with me. I literally took off from work. Wow, that's um, major. Wow. Yeah, he, and it, dude, we didn't, we didn't really spend time on deal mechanics. We spent time on what the hell was wrong with Maurice thinking that he just needed to go backwards back to single family stuff. And I'm so grateful to his name is Craig. His first name, I won't put his last name out there, but I, I'm so grateful to him for coming down because that's what a mentor is supposed to do. See something in you and be like, you know what, I'm going to invest my time in you and, and do something out of the ordinary. Within three months of him showing up, I had my first multifamily under contract. Um, to, within I don't know uh, maybe eighteen months after that I had my seventh under contract seventh seven, seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean it, it just it didn't blow up it just it's almost like he kicked the clog out of the drain or something and uh, since then I've been doing multifamily typically apartment complexes but I do do mobile home parks as well um, I think I have four open contracts on additional properties now. And it's just been a whirlwind, and uh, I am super grateful that he did that. But I'm also giving you know myself a little bit of credit for recognizing that I needed to grow as a person, and I, I just wasn't sticking where I was sticking. Dude, that's that's phenomenal. Um, especially, I mean, shout out to your mentor. That's I've yeah. never even heard of anything like that. Like the, I mean, it's usually uh, the student always traveling to the mentor, and typically it's a group kind of a group uh, meeting to basically to kind of save the mentor's time a little bit so you can uh, maximize this, you know, who, who he's teaching with, but for that mentor to come down to you to take a, uh, take a plane ticket and, you know, come travel and see you just to work on your mindset. I mean, that seems like what it was. You say limiting beliefs, but I mean, yeah. um, I, I talked to Rod Cleef a couple of weeks ago and he, that's one of the things he said, he was like, Hey, 80, 90% of your success, all deals with, you know, your mindset. You, what you think of yourself so yeah um, that's that's just amazing that's that's awesome it, it was total mindset but it was thank you for that feedback so let's talk about that first deal right yeah. so you, you know three months three months after unclogging the drain you know you're kicking into high gear and you're you're starting to you uh, have your first deal under contract what did that look like so that deal was a little bit unique that was actually a mobile home park i, I don't know I, I had a former neighbor um who he and I have stayed connected because we're like-minded about life. And we, we can get, I, and I would like to touch on that, that mindset about life at some point as we're talking, but he and I became partners. Um, he had found, he knew that I was in the space of financial freedom and generate, trying to generate passive income. And he found, and he had a relationship uh, up in Pennsylvania. And together after we talked, he worked through um, us being partners and going after this particular deal. The interesting thing about it, it was a 16 acre mobile home park that had 80 pads on it, expandable to 120. The owner of it, this is why mobile home parks are crazy. The owner of it was an older gentleman who built it back in the seventies. 
um, who's in his low 80s right now. He's in his 80, 80 years old. He, it's not that he wanted to necessarily get rid of the park. He just wanted to make sure that he and his wife had enough income to live on. But he also wanted to make sure that the residents that he has known for 25 years were, were well taken care of. This particular park is in a very, very affluent area in central Pennsylvania. Uh, think $2 million estates all around it, right? Wow. So developers are trying to snap up this 16 acres of land. To build. Oh, man. It, and it was the relationship we built with him as a seller. No, forget seller. Relationship we built with him as a person. I mean, he knew that we weren't going to come in there and do the typical corporate, everyone's got to go, we're going to sell this land, all that type of stuff. So it all worked out. He gave us seller financing. And when I tell you seller financing, he gave us 3% interest only. So you can, yeah. What? I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> what? <laughs> so wait a minute, wait a minute. So you, <laughs> you, you built a relationship with this, uh, this park owner. Um, yeah. And... He liked you. Well, he uh, he liked what you guys were gonna do so much that he not only gave you sellers financing, but yeah. also three yeah. percent. And and he could have he could have easily sold. I'm sure he probably could have sold it for millions just the land alone. Sold the land for double what we paid for. That that's crazy. That yeah. is crazy. Yeah. And here, but it is crazy. But it, it gave me a great lesson that has benefited me and my partners and investors today, which is every seller has some sort of goal. Like if you can find a seller that has a problem that you can solve, then they're going to win. And his problem was that he wanted to have 10,000 roughly of cash coming in cash flow a month. So him and his beautiful wife would be able to live out their days. And okay. So, you know, that 10,000 equated to roughly 3% interest only. And obviously he has first position and he gets paid first and no problem. We solved that gentleman's problem of I need money for me and my beautiful wife. And then we solved his problem that these guys are not going to treat the residents on this property uh, like property themselves. And that is key because I think a lot of people, when, um, when they go to, I guess, negotiate these deals, right, they're thinking only money. They're not thinking, they're not thinking just the problem. Most people are like, yeah, so the problem is we already know the problem. The problem is if I offer more money to this guy, then he's going to take it. Well, in that case... And, and I've heard that a few times, actually, in that case, that it just, that's not what it is. It's, um, I mean, he could have obviously gotten a lot more money, yeah. but he's more worried about, he's more concerned about his tenants and, and or his current friends, I guess, in, in that situation. If you've known him for 25 years, I mean, at that point, they're pretty much They're family, at, yeah. that, they're family yeah. at that point. And if, if you go on my Instagram page, and I will link people to it later, but I have a post on there about it where I said that a developer reached out to us and made us a ridiculous offer, and me and my partner said no and um we kind of doubled down and we started like improving the roads and putting in new infrastructure and getting rid of the blighted uh old homes that were in the park i mean kind of at our expense we 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 could have made much more money than we've made to date but we just made a conscious decision to do conscious capitalism if you want to call it that i, I got like this that. Thing, I, every night i want to go to bed knowing that i'm doing the right thing right i, I never want to approach the gray I'd rather make $2 off a, a solid deal than $10 off a deal where I'm taking advantage of people. So um, this was a good deal, especially as my first deal. This was a good deal. And then the floodgates just opened after this thing. That is amazing. Conscious capitalism. I'm going to start using that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I never heard of that before. Okay. So, um, so you, you got the first deal and that was an, an, an amazing deal. Um, yeah. that, that just you see it snowballed into seven deals within eight months, I believe. 18. So, 18 months. 18 months. Okay. So yeah. seven deals in 18 months, either way. I mean, that's crazy impressive. So let's yeah. talk about, let's talk about, um, uh, a little bit of some of your, I guess one of your more recent deals or uh, an interesting deal, maybe that you learned from, uh, you learned a, uh, a strong lesson. It seems like you l learned a lot from that one, but, um, that you learned a, a really good lesson from, uh, I mean, I can talk about an active deal now. I'll just okay. make sure that I kind of like cover up some of the things. So I'm part of a team now. We're doing an $18 million acquisition on 376 units down in Texas. Um, the lending on that deal uh, has been challenging, to, to say the least. Um, the lender actually, for some reason, needed to close roughly two weeks before we had the ability to close. And the deal kind of fell apart. 
Um, I didn't realize that lenders, I mean, I know that lenders have their own time frame as well, but in this case, because the funds for that very large loan of 16 million or whatever it was, um, was tied to a particular timeline for them. They couldn't extend in the manner that the seller and us as buyers were extending it for very small chunks of time. So there was something that I learned in that process. But the funny thing is what, 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 what has happened now is we learned that we could assume, we could actually assume the agency loan of, that the seller actually had. At the beginning of the process, we didn't even know that we could do that, right? Now we're aware that we could do it because what did we do? We asked the question, right? So uh, Freddie or Fanny on that particular case said, oh, it wasn't assumable, but now it is assumable. <laughs> so the, the, because that, that loan happened to be in distress. So here we are with an $18 million property. Um, we, we think that it has fallen apart. By nature of it kind of falling apart, we actually are in a probably a 10 time better position as far as interest rate and terms on terms on the loan and what have you. Um, that's a big lesson that I'm starting to learn. Ask the question. Just because it gives you terms on a piece of paper or you are experienced and you've done 10 deals and you think it's gonna be this way, man, if you don't ask the question, it may not, if, if you don't ask the question, it's an automatic no. And you might be shorting your investors and yourselves of a better situation than you even thought of. Um, so I've, I've learned that. And now, now we will close somewhere in January timeframe. We'll get 376 units under, under man, paying units under management. And, um, you know, whether it's a $3 million or a $1 million or an $18 million property, there's, there's lessons to be learned on all of them. Yeah, that's, that's a uh, good stuff. Asking the question, I, I think, um, are just asking questions in general. Um, I think you're right. A lot of people get caught up on the, Hey, this is the, or not just, Hey, this is what it says on the paper. But a lot of times people get caught up on, Hey, this is the way it's always been, or this is That's the way right. it's worked, worked yeah. for my friend, or this is the way, you know, he did this not understanding that every, every deal or um, especially when it comes to lending or anything, everything is unique to, you know, that certain deal. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and you ask kind of what's going on now. So I have that one. Listen, I, I, I will get into syndication. I am finding that I am getting into syndication, not necessarily by me being the tip of the spear anymore. I'm not. The, what's happening now, and I guess this is just part of the real estate journey per se, is uh, I am starting to connect with, you know, like-minded people like yourself, um, other people who are starting out tip of the spear, or more sophisticated groups who need additional net worth as part of the general partnership and will bring me in so I can add my net worth to the pot um, such that we can qualify for a higher loan or, or what have you. I think that's where my growth has now come to is recognition that, man, I can do way more as part of teams than I could do as me being, I'm using tip of the spear because you know you're military dude. Yeah, it's and, as us being tip of the spear and going out and doing everything on our own. Um, so that's why I say I have the four or five contracts open now. It's not because I'm doing all of the massive work. It's because I'm part of four or five different teams and we are all supporting each other. And you know, I'd much rather get a smaller piece and uh, be a, be a part of a successful team than a larger piece. And it's just me by myself sitting in the corner, like, you know, uh, Scrooge McDuck, like counting my chips or something like that. I, I, I really enjoy the process of being part of people's success. And that's kind of where everything is uh, pushing to right now. And that's, that's major. I think that's like, where you find major growth as well. So um, I, I've just, I'm not going to say I just started realizing that about, I've just started taking action on that piece. Cause that's yes. been a kind of a, I don't want to say downfall, but that's been kind of one of those things, like, I guess, limiting beliefs for me as well. Like, hey, I need to, I, I'm, I have to do everything by myself. And that's just not the case. It's like you're outlining. I mean, you accomplish so much more through a team. And I think yeah. it's better to, it's better to get, you know, 10% of 10% or 15% of something than, you know, uh, 0% of, of nothing by yeah. working with a team. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's how, <clears throat> that's how my, my, uh, I guess portfolio is continuing to grow organically. I, I'm not in this space of 
I gotta be the 60 millionaire. Like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of those guys. I prefer to spend a lot more time on life. I will grow the portfolio organically, but by also growing the portfolio, I'm growing my business network base. I'm growing my friendship base. I'm growing my experience base. Like I'm, I'm legitimately having fun with what I'm doing while building legacy for myself and for my family. Um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm frankly, I'm just having a blast. And now I've started to mentor. I was mentoring regardless, but now I started to uh, be paid as a mentor. So that's taking up a lot of my time now, but like, dude, I'm having fun doing this stuff and uh, you can. And I think at least for me, that's the way I want to be. I, I, I never wanted to get into this thing to be some, untouchable mogul who walks you know runs around in a rolls royce no this is a this was a life thing this was a financial freedom thing this was a uh i want to control my own destiny thing and uh that's pretty much what i'm doing that that is amazing i, I love that i i think a lot of people are including myself are trying to get to are, are working towards getting to that end and, uh, and i think that's just phenomenal i'm glad that you're you're giving back not just not just to the community but also seems like to other investors through your mentor and your coaching your coaching yeah. uh platform which is which is awesome so um if you could give if you can give first time investor or just any investors in general uh, yeah. one piece of advice what would that be uh it's the cliche one is just do something um i just last night, I got a text on Instagram. It was a young lady. I don't know where she is, but she sent me a message because she heard me on another podcast. She said she was getting into her first property and should. And she heard me say on that podcast, if I knew then what I know now, I would have started with multifamily much earlier, which is very true because I'm getting much, I'm getting to my goals way faster with multifamily than I did with single family um, as far as units and, and uh, cash flow. Cash flow and all those types of things. But what I told her was, don't worry about all that. Like, just do, she was, hey, should I do a two unit? Should I do a four unit? Should I do a fourplex? Should I do a fiveplex? Should I go after a 10 unit? I said, don't, stop, stop overthinking it. Find a deal and just do one deal. Like, you just have to get into the space. It's the same question you asked me before of, hey, uh, people are going to ask you about condos. Do you think condos is the right thing? It's irrelevant. It's the fact that I got in and did something to take control of my own destiny. And I'm still doing those types of things. Um, that would be the one thing that I would tell people, man, get over the analysis paralysis crap, find something. If you, if you wanna do it, you will do it. If you wanna get in this game, you'll, you'll get in this game. If you wanna take control of your future, you'll take control of your future. Um, love David Goggins, you know, the-, the yeah, You can't hurt me. Just, I, I, I'm just gonna put this out there, just shut up and do the deal. Like, it's just too much of this, like, should I do this one? Should I do that one? Should I just do a deal, course correct? If you fall flat on your face, great. You have that knowledge and you'll be able to recover from it or use it to recover from, from anything else. But that would be my one piece of advice is just do, just act, just get something done. I love that. That's great. Just, you know, just do it you know, shut up and, and get it done. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I think you learn lessons throughout the process. I think everybody falls flat on their face at some point. And those, uh, I think it's Gary Vee that talks a lot about um, the more you fail or fail your way to success. Someone says that like fail your way to success, meaning oh, you, you yeah. gotta, you gotta continue to uh, take that effort, take action, regardless if you fail or not, just like you said, you learn those lessons and you continue moving forward. So that's, yeah. that's amazing. Hey, thank you so much for, uh, for, for sharing that. And, yeah. um, how can how can our listeners and our viewers get in contact with you? Find more, uh, find out more about you. Yeah, so you you can. <clears throat> I keep saying this every podcast I do, but I'll, I'll I'm gonna work on getting web presence out there just because the story, how I how I got to this space, I think is important for me to start sharing with people. And I'm all, I am now in this space of like I want to I, I want nothing from anybody. I legit want to help people get to a point where they have. Um, the ability to make decisions for themselves and their, their themselves and their family. Um, I'm on LinkedIn at just my first name dot or first name last name Maurice Philogene. I'm on Instagram Maurice Philogene, and then eventually I'll be on um, web presence. And you know the one thing I just wanted to throw out, Dan, just as a parting, I guess a parting shot for all this real estate stuff that we talk and this these big games that we talk and these numbers and everything. For me and for most of the people in my circle, 
Uh, this was never about the money aspect. This was about the lifestyle control aspect and being able to control your own destiny. I, I still work at active employers. I do. Um, I, I do it because I want to be there and it accelerates my goals and I still like the customers I have and I still like running the streets and helping the community and stuff. Um, but my passion is life. And I was telling you just before we uh, got started, I just came back from Lebanon. That was my 95th country um, because I love to immerse myself in culture and be around people and figure stuff out. I don't go as a tourist. I go as someone who's trying to figure out the country and connect with people. Passive income gives you the ability to go do those types of things. So whatever your thing is, whether it's travel or you want to be a bodybuilder or you want to be a chef or you want to, uh, I don't know, if you, you, you just want to take care of your family or you want to knit, passive income is a way to get there. It's a way for you to control your time and time is the only true asset we have. So I just wanted to part with that because I think a lot of times on these podcasts or when you see someone speaking on a stage, they talk about the number of units they have and the net worth and no, man, the whole thing is about passive income and controlling your time so it's such that you can take care of your family and realize whatever legacy it is you want for yourself and your kids and you go from there. So I just want to give that parting shot to anyone who's trying to figure out why they are coming into real estate. That, that's phenomenal advice. Uh, and, and thank you for, for sharing that. I think you're 100% right. Um, typically we do get caught up in the, Hey, how much, basically how much are you worth, how much money you have. And, yeah. and that, and, and it is more about, Hey, uh, financial freedom. I and mean, that's why the, the channel, that's why the show is called financial freedom. <laughs> Journal. So it's, it's about the financial freedom and, and the ability to do something that you find passion in something that you find, um, something that you love to do basically. So yeah. um, I really appreciate you, um, you coming on the show. Hey, every, all the links, that are all the contact information that uh, Maurice just gave. It'll be down below, uh, down below in the video. Um, so please make sure you link up with uh, Maurice and find out more about him. Um, I, I linked up with him on LinkedIn as well. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely continue to talk. And um, I, I just appreciate all the knowledge you shared and uh, you coming on the show and, and, and um, basically sharing your story. So yeah, man, thank you very much. Absolutely my pleasure. And I'm happy to connect <laughs> with anyone who reaches out to me uh, for sure. Okay. And uh, and with that, hey, this is this is Dan Wynn signing off. All right.